Welcome to Lecture Online and here we're going to see an example of how we use reverse osmosis to provide drinking water and this is a practice that's done in quite a few places in the world especially a place where energy is abundantly available and fresh water is very scarce like in desert regions like the Middle East and in places even like in Florida where water drinking water can be scarce is places where we use this process to provide good drinking water in Tampa, Florida, for example, there's a plant that uses this process where 2.4 million residents receive water from such a plant. So, how does this work? Well, what we do here is we have a pipe, and within that pipe, uh, this, is, this is a porous pipe that is surrounded by semi-permeable uh, semi membranes, I should say. And we have fresh water running through the pipe, and around the fresh water, we have a whole series of membranes, one over the other, that form like a cylinder structure. And then the whole cylinder structure is then, of course, encapsulated into a steel container so that no water can leak out. And so we have these plants that have hundreds, sometimes thousands of these cylinders, one after the other. And we provide those cylinders then with ocean water under very large pressure, again, to reverse this osmosis process. As long as we can feed in the salt water under high enough pressure, we can then push uh, fresh water molecules across the semipermeable membrane in greater numbers that want to go in this direction. So again, we'll figure out what pressure is required for that. But if we push them hard enough, we can actually push the seawater through these layers of membranes into the pipe here. And then the pipe will then carry the drinking water out. So how much pressure is required? Well, we have to multiply the molarity times the gas constant times the temperature of the water. And let's say the water is probably at a temperature of, let's say, 15 degrees centigrade. So 15 degrees centigrade is about uh, 288 Kelvin. All right. So molarity uh, for seawater is about 1.2 moles per liter. That's because the sodium and the chloride, which is our, the predominant constituents of salt in seawater, will split up in their ions. And of course, we have to take, take into account the molarity of the ions. So it's about 1.2 moles per liter. So 1.2 moles per liter multiplied times the gas constant, which is 0 0.0821 uh, liter times moles divided by Kelvin time, oh no, not liter times moles, this is liter times atmospheres. Atmospheres, moles goes on the denominator, there we go. And then we multiply times the temperature, and it's a 15 degrees centigrade, it's about 288 Kelvin. So, how much pressure is required? You'll be surprised, it's quite a bit. So we have 1.2 times 0 0.0821 times 288 equals 28.4 atmospheres of pressure. So that would be 28.4 atmospheres. That's a lot of pressure. And so how do you pump in seawater, great quantities of seawater, because you want to make this an efficient process, you want to have enough drinking water to make it worth your while. And so it requires a lot of energy to pump seawater in at that large, large pressure pushing it through all these cylinders and you should have one cylinder after the other. So you have these big banks of cylinders like that and you push the ocean water through there and then slowly through the semipermeable membranes you push the water molecules through the membranes one membrane after another so by the time you get to the central portion of it it's virtually pure water and then the pure water is then pushed out and then piped into the the uh, municipal water system to be used as drinking water irrigation water and so forth so that's how we do that um, it's, uh, it's a remarkable process and again it always comes down to if you have plentiful energy you can do this and have almost an unlimited amount of water, an unlimited water supply because the oceans are vast. We just have to separate the water molecules from the, sol from the solutes that are in there that are not desirable. So one good example of why knowing and understanding osmosis and osmotic pressure we can actually utilize it to provide something we really need in great quantities.